Day 924 of the Ukrainian war map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian war. Jazzy here, and today is another update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to some of the most important happenings on the ground in Ukraine. So starting off, we'll take a look at those Russian losses, as currently Russia sits on more than 620,000 military personnel losses, representing an additional 1,390 in the past day. Then, as for hardware losses, 7 main battle tanks, 27 APVs, and 30 artillery. Then headed to the map, where Ukraine plans to hold on to Russian territory seized last month indefinitely, as an additional means to pressure Putin into talks, as noted by Zelensky in a recent interview, as he emphasized that Ukraine doesn't want to keep Russian land, but also stated that it is necessary for later negotiations and for plans to end the war, and a plan for which he will present to global partners later this year. And it's fairly incredible in the sense that these days we're talking about Ukraine holding onto land belonging to their very own invader from right next door. How did it come to this, Putin? Then to zoom a bit further in to the map and look into Kurshatov, where the Kursk nuclear power plant lies on the outskirts of as new concerns have emerged with a Russian member of parliament in military garbs who has openly questioned the official reports from Russian authorities casting doubt on their portrayal of the conflict, making reference to the town of Koreshitov, where some evacuations are in place, which in turn, as he says, points to an impending danger. And so this continued theme of questioning the Russian military and questioning the lack of transparency, the lies, the convolution, all from inside of Russia itself, is becoming a steadily rising theme. But what is perhaps the most shocking is that from the very same town, we saw a video of Russian soldiers drinking and relaxing in a school classroom. Meanwhile, classes are in progress in the adjacent classroom right next door. And given what I've seen, that's some sort of recipe for a disaster right there. No Ukraine required. Not to mention, once again, Russia just living up to the unprofessional Russian soldier drunkard stereotype never ceases to amaze. But not in a positive light. Then from within the wider Ukrainian-controlled region of Kursk, a local woman curses Putin and, in tears, tells a Ukrainian defender how good it used to be to go to the Ukrainian city of Sumy, just across the border, and how bad life has become now. And it's a sentiment that is quite consistent with the earlier invasion stories from the locals of these bordering northern oblasts, where they would even initially say that they were extremely annoyed that they could no longer do a quick drive across the border to Ukraine and get their shopping, their healthcare, their services all sorted, and thereby frustrated that it was a luxury that they no longer had. And so overall, Kursk is a place full of ironies, with all of the Kremlin's initial invasion narratives about protecting the Russian people clearly turning out to be rubbish, poppycock, or hogwash, and thus becoming narratives that are increasingly difficult for Russians to understand. Then headed down on the map, looking at Pokrovsk, that direction where there was little expectation of stabilizing on this front line in the immediate future. Although, as far as yesterday, and in particular where today is concerned, there was actually no changes on this front. In fact, reportedly, Ukraine retook some positions at Novorodivka. So it is a strange beast for this 80 kilometer or 50 mile front line. And although that might sound quite incorrect or incredulous to say, Russia's bulge has about a 20 kilometer span in terms of the shortest diameter. So where the Russian army is to outwardly expand in all directions on this front whilst maintaining the bulging salient, it very quickly becomes an exponential growth in the length of the contact point that then needs to be further and further supported by Russian military logistics. Now, Russia could still take the land east of Nevelska and collapse the Ukrainian-held positions, although that wouldn't certainly happen overnight, not likely to anyway. And this is due to, well, at least in part, due to the long-term fortified Ukrainian positions just beyond, as this location on the map is actually where the 2014 Donbass lines were drawn. Not to mention also, it wouldn't be Russia's first point of attack, 
given that there is a number of lakes and rivers that would make expansion a bit more difficult as well. But as for this larger region, we still do see the Russian army paying for the pleasure of positioning themselves on this front with a Russian column in the Pokrovsk direction destroyed by the 21st Separate Motorized Infantry Battalion. As it is genuinely right now a target rich environment. Then taking a brief look just north of here as Russians continue to put pressure along the T516 highway headed south into the Turetsk direction. Uh, so far this looks to be the main axis of attack with no advances that have been recorded south of Turetsk. And also for some time now at New York. The map has been displaying in a way such that the Russian army has encircled a grey zone. Which is no small feat for any army, but not one that you would want to be proud of. Then headed across to the Ukrainian capital territory as Russia reportedly used a new missile launched from an S-400 system on an attack in Kyiv yesterday. The new missile, the 48N6DM, known for its low accuracy, was successfully shot down by Ukrainian air defense. Although these still do pose a significant danger to civilian sites due to the very nature of that low accuracy. Then right nearby on the map, but not really relevant, but since I'm close enough, Russian media reported that Russian priests drove around areas in the Bryansk region that borders to Ukraine and performed their particular brand of shamanic incantations for the saving of the fatherland and native Bryansk region from enemy invasion. But given the particular use of colors here, maybe they're orthodox double agents. Then taking a quick look at some news and hardware updates. So looking at this first piece, we've already seen another instance of thermite carrying Ukrainian drones dubbed the Dragonfire weapon, targeting Russian trenches, setting fire to the area below. And it's almost in a class of its own, as there's no head-on precision required, just a forward-moving, showering, if you will, down upon a location. And is something that is now an option whereby Ukraine might find a plentiful amount of use cases for stopping invaders with. Then as for some more Ukrainian hardware news, but on the other end of the spectrum. So a few soldiers are getting equipped with these new devices. They call them sugar cubes and are personal drone detectors that sense enemy drones nearby without giving away the wearer's position. They're small, lightweight, easy to use and work well to save lives. They pick up the enemy controller frequencies, alerting soldiers to the in-flight risks. Then headed across to another Russian military mobilization blunder, as you may remember the Rilsk column strikes overnight in the Kursk Oblast on August 8 and August 9. Well, the wives of those passing soldiers appear to be getting shortchanged, as some department within the Russian MOD appears to be predating the death certificates, changing the time and place of death, likely as a means to defer or shun responsibility and minimizing ruble payouts to the families. So it looks to be like another case of the Kremlin that is offended by everything but ashamed by nothing. Then let's go to something a little bit lighter for a moment, shall we, as a Ukrainian soldier shows off his vegetable garden next to the trench. Now, among the crops grown are cucumbers, parsley, lettuce, tomatoes, and onions. Good for them. Although this is definitely located further to the rear at the second or third line of defense of the trench networks. However, they probably do help feed the first liners. Then to wrap up the video with a couple of quick brief funnies here. And with the first one, so Taiwan's president, Lai ching Te, recently stated that if China's claims on Russia are about territorial integrity, it should also reclaim the historical territories ceded to Russia in the 19th century under the Treaty of Organ. He made this remark to emphasize that China's real intentions towards Taiwan are not rooted in territorial concerns, but rather in achieving global hegemony. And I do expect this wallop of land to be on China's radar. But you know, when the time is right. Then headed to a final funny as Putin visiting the Russian region of Tuva recently, where in an awkward moment when he asked a schoolgirl how far it is for her to get to school from home, 
Her answer led the school principal to experience utter panic as he was mouthing the words, trying to get the student to say, not long or not far. But she already said it was a bit far to walk. And so the principal went on to then advise Putin that there will be a bus and there will be a minibus, etc, etc. But it seemed a bit too late by that point. Sounds like those funds were misappropriated from the school a long time ago. Oh, and the panic on his face, pure gold. So that's it for today, guys. A little bit of a shorter video, technical issues, all sorts of things. Getting through them, though, so that's the main thing there. Thanks again for watching. Please comment, subscribe, like, all of those nice things, and the support as well. Can't do it without you. And I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.